Hey guys, today's topic is graphing motion. So we'll be able to, to describe things that's shown in this graph and um, be able to you know, tell the story of it because there is a story to each graph and what it's telling us. So to review some topics, we know that motion is a change in position measured by distance and time. Uh, and speed tells us the rate at which that object moves. So we've been doing calculations with speed, but now we'll be able to tell on a graph how that what that looks like. Velocity tells us the speed and the direction that it's moving in, while acceleration tells us a rate at which it is moving. And acceleration will be shown on a graph differently as well. So when we're talking about distance time graphs, time is always on the x-axis and distance is always on the y-axis. So as we see here, um, and to remind ourselves of the acronym dry mix, Something on the y-axis is the dependent variable. So here, this is the dependent variable. Uh, how much distance is covered depends on the time. On the x-axis, this is the our independent variable. And this is the manipulated variable. How much time, how much do I want to plot of time? And how far are we going to get there? So based on how much time we have, that's how much distance will be covered. So if an object is not moving, we're going to see that shown as a horizontal line. And that makes sense. Let's say we start at zero and we go to 10 seconds or whatever, and zero to 10 meters. Well, if in 10 seconds, I maintain, let's say, four meters the entire time. That means I'm not moving. So when we're looking at these graphs, we need to be able to interpret what is happening not just memorize that a horizontal line is not moving so we say this object is at rest so if an object is moving at a constant speed it means that it has the same increase in distance at a given time so for example let's make up some data here to interpret this graph um, let's say for every second let's say this is one second you go one meter okay and then on, at two seconds you went two meters and so you maintain this um, constant pattern and you would keep going and keep going so that's telling me that i'm going constantly for every second or every minute i'm going at the same distance each time so now let's say you have two lines one is steep like the dash line here and one is not as steep well those two lines although they're both constant they're telling me something different if if I have a steeper line as shown here, notice that the time for that dash one stops here while the dotted line stops here. That means the dash line, whatever object it was, reached that same distance in less time. So let me erase this so you can see that. So for example, here let's say this is five seconds and let's say this is ten seconds. Well, great, but they're both at the same distance. That means this, the steeper one, was faster. It had a higher speed. It reached that distance in less time. So this distance time graph shows an object returning from start to coming back. So let's say 0 to 10 seconds, and let's zero, 0 to 10 meters. So I'm going from 10 meters all the way back to the beginning. Graphs that show acceleration look different. They're not going to have a straight line. Why? Because acceleration is a rate. Uh, when you're accelerating, you're going from zero and you're slowly or assuredly going, uh, increasing your speed. And so this is what is shown here. At first, it's very low, and then all of a sudden, you have a quick uh, rise in distance covered in that time. So that means it is accelerating. So the main points here is that the distance time graphs tell you how far that object moved within that certain time limit. So the steeper the graph, the faster the motion. Okay, because they're even though they're going the same distance, that steeper graph is doing that distance in less time, meaning it's faster. A horizontal line means that it's not changing position. That makes sense. You maintain that same distance throughout the entire time. That means you're not moving. You're at rest. A downward sloping line means that the object is returning to start. And that makes sense. We start from a certain 
high point or your end point and you're going back to the beginning back to that zero line in your graph so now we can interpret these graphs so for example um, on your paper on your paper you should have this color coded so that you know what you're looking at when you see these graphs so for example the green line here is fast steady speed so it's pretty constant and it's pretty fast as well because um, it's covering a large distance in a short amount of time here the red line you start off with a steady speed and then you become you stay at stationary or at rest because you maintain that same speed the entire time and then this line because it's going backwards it's going at from this distance back to zero so it's returning to the start the blue line it says it's getting faster but to be more specific and you should um, write this down it, it is accelerating it's this curved line if it was just a line like this then you would have said this is just that's not accelerating this is just speed it's just a constant speed as opposed to the accelerating line.